Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 5, the May 2008 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so we have a manufacturing entity, T Terra Lounge Manufacturing, had the following balances as of April 30th, 2008. Okay, so they have a long list of balances here. Let's browse through them quickly. So we have some opening inventory, opening stock, raw material, work in progress, and finished goods. Now we also have some clue, some purchases, sorry, raw material and finished goods. That's very interesting. I think this is one of the few times in CSEC PO we have seen them include purchases of finished goods in a manufacturing account, right? Now, subsequent to that, we have carriage in on raw materials, carriage out on finished goods. Then we have some other items down here, direct labor, office salaries, utilities. Okay, then we have some other items down here as well. Depreciation on factory equipment, on office equipment. Then we have rent, we have sales. And then the last set of stuff in the list here is closing stock for raw materials, work in progress and finished goods, okay? They then tell us the following. Overheads are to be apportioned as follows. Utilities, factory 70%, office 30%. Rent, factory 50%, office 50%. Okay, that's interesting. Now, the first piece of the question, for 18 marks, prepare the manufacturing, trading, and profit and loss account of T-Terra Lounge Manufacturing for the year ended April 30th, 2008. Costs must be clearly identified. Now, again, they used to have, they, yeah, what they used to do was have one long statement including both pieces. Right? And of course, the trading and profit and loss account was what they used to call the income statement. Now, for the purposes of this solution, I'm going to do the manufacturing account separately from the income statement, right? which is kind of in contravention to the instructions here. But I'm just doing that because I don't think they will bring one like this for you as in the full length statement. They most likely will ask you to do one and then the other or a piece of the other. So that's why I'm choosing to do that. Right. OK. So let's take a look. Okay, so don't forget to head up your statement properly. T Terra Lounge Manufacturing, Manufacturing Account for the year. So FYE means for the year ended April 30th, 2008. Okay, so the first thing we're going to start with is the cost of raw materials consumed. Now, if you need a refresher or need to know how to do a manufacturing account, um, I strongly suggest you check out my card up there, which will carry you to my manufacturing account video tutorial. I break it down very simply from scratch. I don't try to give you a format to memorize with every single item. I break it down into pieces and then put the pieces together, which yes, will give you a longer format after. But when you understand the fundamental pieces and how they fit together, you tend to remember things better. At least that's my opinion. Might work for you, might not, but you can give it a watch. Anyway, so the cost of raw materials consumed kind of follows the cost of goods sold, right? Open and stock plus purchases minus closing stock. So the open and stock of raw materials, according to the information, was 36,520. So we're going to put that in here. Now we had purchases. Purchases of raw material was 13720. So we are also going to include that here. But we had carriage inwards on the raw material of 3600. So carriage inwards is a delivery charge, which we have to include as part of the cost. Now there were no returns outwards of the raw materials. So we are going to just total that and we're going to add that to the inventory at start to get the cost of raw materials available. Now we are going to subtract the closing stock of raw materials of $39,000. That's going to give us a cost of raw materials consumed of $131,840. Now this is the prime cost section and that's our direct materials. We also need to see this direct labor and any other direct expenses. Now, it says quite explicitly here, direct labor, 134.6. Uh, I'm not seeing any other direct expenses, so we're going to add that item here and get a sub to. Actually, yeah, I put a line for other direct expenses just for the sake of illustration, right? But if they don't give it to you, don't put it in, all right? Now, we're going to add those two items together to get prime cost. So total prime cost is 266,440, to which we're going to add overheads. Actually, let's put the word add in there. You don't have to put the word add. And I'll put factory overheads, right? You could just, you could actually just put overheads or factory overheads. It doesn't make a difference. Now, we had a few items here. So if we take a look, the first item I'm seeing is utilities, right? Now, office salaries is not manufacturing. So don't include that. That's going to go in the income statement, right? Now, utilities, that figure had to be apportioned down here. 70% of factory 
and 30% the office, right? So we're going to take the utilities figure and multiply by 70%, right? So 70% of 15,000 is 10,500. Next, we have depreciation on factory equipment, 15,008, right? The office equipment is non-manufacturing, which will go in the income statement. So we're going to put the manufacturing piece, the factory equipment depreciation here. Okay, the next item I'm seeing is rent 29,000. Now we had to split that between factory and office 50 50. So 29,000, 50% is just a half, that's going to give us 14,005. Now there were no other overhead items, sorry. So we're just going to add these three items together to get total overheads. And we're going to add that to the prime cost to get the total cost of production incurred with the current period. Now we have to make an adjustment for work in progress or work in process. We're going to have to take the open inventory of 45,920 and add it and subtract the closing inventory of 33,800. Now, I like to do it in a column to the left and put a, a, put an, a, like a net adjustment here, but you could put both of these figures in the column right here and just add and subtract going down because it's not going to make a difference arithmetically. Right? So we get a cost of goods manufactured or cost of goods produced of 319,360. Okay, so that's the first half of part A, the manufacturing account. So I'm now going to just shift down a little bit and we're going to take a look at the income statement. Okay, so T. Terrell's manufacturing income statement for the year ended April 30th, 2008. Okay, so we're going to start with the sales figure. Now, as per the list of balances, the sales figure was $500,000, right? So we're going to put that here. Now, we don't have any returns in. We just going to therefore go to less cost of goods sold. So we're going to start with the opening stock or opening inventory of finished goods of 36,200. So we're going to plug that in there. Now we're going to add the purchases of finished goods, which we have here as 50,600, right? And we are also going to add the cost of goods manufactured, which we just calculated up in the manufacturing account of 319,360, right? So normally, when I teach this topic, I tell students that, yeah, usually we have one or the other, not both. But I do, I do tell them because of this question, there can be both. Usually when entities are manufacturing their own goods, they don't buy to resell, they manufacture. But it is possible that a company could be making its own thing to sell and also purchasing other items to resell as well. So it's not beyond the realm of possibility. It's probably um, done by many companies. I just don't know them specifically. But... If you encounter this in your paper, you know what to do with it now. So we're going to add all of these things together to get the cost of goods available for sale, from which we will subtract the closing inventory of finished goods of $47,000. Right. That's going to give us a cost of goods sold of $359,160, which when subtracted from the sales figure above is going to give us a gross profit of $148,40. Now, there were no additional revenues or other revenues, so we're going to go straight to less expenses. So we had carriage outwards of finished goods, which is delivery that we pay for. So that's a selling expense that's going to go here. Then we also had the office salaries of 34,800. So we're going to put that here as well. Then the utilities of 15. So don't forget utilities had to be split 70 to factory and 30% to office. So 30% of the 15,000 is 4,500. And then we also had depreciation on office equipment of 5,400. So we're going to put that in here too. And we had the rent. So the rent was 29,000, remember? But according to the question, it had to be a portion between the factory and office 50-50%. And half of 29,000 is simply 14,500. We're going to add all those expenses up to get total expenses of 61,600, which we're going to subtract from our gross profit to give us a net profit of 79,240. Okay, now there's one last part of the question. They're asking us to calculate the unit cost of items produced if 25,000 units were produced during the period. Okay, the unit cost is the cost per unit. And to find that out, we simply have to take the total cost, which is the cost that is manufactured, and divide by the number of units, 25,000. So again, like I said, it's simple. You're going to take the 319,360, which is the final item in the manufacturing account, divide by the number of units, and we're going to get approximately $12.77 per unit. And that's the end of the question there. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question five from the May 2008 PUA paper two. If you have any further questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful POA handouts. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.